Hello and welcome to Chuck's Diecast Car and Model Reviews. Uh, what you're looking at here is a Ferrari FXX. Um, but uh, this is a model and we're not going to be discussing this model today. We're going to be discussing, I guess, a little bit of philosophy and that is why do we collect models like this? Uh, it's kind of simple really. I mean, the reason why we collect models like this Ferrari FXX is because one, they're really cool. They're fast, they're crazy looking, they're cool looking, and the second reason is we can't afford to buy them, so we buy the model. You know, I spent uh, 15 bucks on this model as opposed to $4 million <laughs> for the real thing. Uh, so, you know, that's why we that's why we collect models for the most part. I collect something else also because I like them and I think they're gorgeous and I can't afford them and that is I buy I guess you could call them tribute models uh, or perhaps replicas of watches. And uh, well we'll go ahead and take a look at the ones that I have. The first one I have here is a tribute to the Omega Speedmaster. This is uh, also known as the Moon Watch, and that is uh, the watch that you know, the Apollo astronauts wore while on the moon. So that's uh, why we have this uh, particular name of nickname of Moonwatch for the Omega. Again, it's a very nice, elegant, simple looking chronograph. And uh, this Pagani design version looks pretty close to the Omega. Of course, uh, when you look at it in close up, you know, there are differences in quality, of course. Also, this one has a uh, quartz movement as opposed to an automatic movement, although it, that also does mean that it um, is actually more accurate than in the automatic, but, you know, a quartz movement is much cheaper than a automatic movement. But instead of spending, you know, $4,000 or whatever a uh, Omega Speedmaster cost, I spent... 90 bucks on this one. It's a very handsome watch. I enjoy wearing it. And plus it has the nifty little engraving on the back of the uh, of little moon rocket going to the moon there, you know. So, hey, a little bit of fun right there. So anyway, um, that is the Pagani Omega Speedmaster Tribute. Second watch I have is this. This is again by Pagani and is a tribute to the Rolex Daytona. Now if I were to buy a Rolex Daytona and I would love to have one I would have to shell out forty thousand dollars for that watch but I spent a hundred bucks on this one and actually if I shelled out forty thousand dollars for that Rolex Daytona, I wouldn't have it for long because I would probably immediately sell it because I could sell it for twice what I bought it for. That's how much these watches are in demand. And of course, if you were to buy a, the vintage ones, you know, the ones from the 1960s, those sell in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. In fact, a Rolex Daytona is the most expensive watch ever sold. There was one that belonged to Paul Newman, and he used to wear it when he was racing. It was engraved on the back. After he passed away, it was sold off for charity, you know, because, of course, Paul Newman was a very charitable guy. That watch sold for $17 million. I spent 100 bucks on this watch, so, uh, so there you go. Uh, 
again, it's a very handsome watch and a very, very nice replica of the Daytona. Again, it has the quartz movement. It has the sapphire crystal and the ceramic bezel or tachymeter like the uh, Omega Tribute has. Uh, however, it doesn't have any nifty, um, uh, you know, engraving on the back there. Um, funny story about this, this particular watch here was that a few months ago I was at an event at the local Porsche dealer. Uh, I live in Colorado Springs, Colorado, where I have the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, so they were having an event there where they were talking all the, to all the hill climb racers who were driving Porsches, you know, a lot of big names, you know, uh, that were at the event. So, uh, so I was there to see them talk and see their cars. And while I was there, I noticed uh, standing in the crowd, there was a guy named Matt Farah. Matt Farah, uh, he writes for, I believe, Car and Driver magazine, but he's most famous for having his own uh, videos and, uh, uh, you know, a YouTube page called The Smoking Tire, and it's very enjoyable. And so I went up to him and started chatting with him. And then uh, while I was talking to him, he's, he looks down at my watch and he goes, whoa, that's a nice watch you've got there. And I had to tell him, yeah, well, unfortunately, it's not a Daytona. It's a, it's a tribute, but it was a, uh, it's enough of a looker and a famous, you know, the Daytona is a famous enough looking watch that, uh, that it, it caught his eye. Um, but in the end, you know, it was good to chat with him because he was wearing a really nice watch. He was wearing a carbon fiber Panerai and, uh, it was a limited edition watch and I got to talk to him about his Panerai. And then after I got done chatting with him and after I got home, I decided I'm going to look up how much did this carbon fiber Panerai sell for? And it was $12,500. So, yeah, Matt Fat has a little bit of money. And he's actually more than willing to admit that he has money. And he's, uh, you know, because he is actually born with a bit of a silver spoon in his mouth. And he's more than uh, willing to admit it. So, good for Matt. Anyway, that is my quote-unquote Daytona. Next watch I have here is a tribute to one of my favorite watches of all time as well, and that is the Tag Heuer Monaco. Um, the Monaco gained its fame by being the watch that Steve McQueen was wearing at, during the movie Le Mans. This was arguably the first automatic or the Tag Heuer Monaco, I should say, and not this mo this watch. It was arguably the first automatic self-winding uh, watch that was a uh, chronograph that was available. But um, but this one is a again a tribute, but not not a copy of the Monaco. It has the square case. It has. Uh, the blue tone. It has the two square uh, chronograph dials, but in the Daytona, those two chronograph dials in the center are actually at the nine and three position and not 12 and six like this watch. This watch is made by Loris, which is a sub uh, brand of Seiko. And uh, I think it is a really cool watch. I love the blue color, which is, you know, the traditional color of the Monaco. The white subdials are really, really neat. And I think it's just a handsome watch. The watch originally came with a metal band, but in fitting with the racing tradition, I decided to put it on the perforated leather band. 
So again, a neat little watch, non-automatic like the uh, uh, Tag Heuer, but again, a quartz watch. So very cool. And I did actually make sure to get the sort of uh, imitation Tag Heuer clasp for my leather band there too. Final watch I have is this. This is, again, by Pagani Design. And this is a tribute to the Omega Seamaster. <clears throat> this one, uh, I believe I paid about $110, $120 for this. By the way, I paid, I think, maybe $70 for that Loris. But, um, but this one, again, is a really, really nice tribute to the... Omega Seamaster and it does have again the crystal uh, sapphire made of sapphire I should say and um, instead of having a tachymeter it actually does have um, the uh, rotating bezel for divers because this is the Seamaster interestingly though, though I paid a pretty nominal price for this uh, like I said, maybe a hundred bucks. This one actually does have an automatic movement. This is a movement by Seiko. Um, when I bought the watch originally, it was about a minute or so fast per day. So I took it to the local watch guy and said, hey, can you please go ahead and calibrate this watch so it'll be more on time? And so I had, you know, uh, had him do that for 20 bucks. So, uh, again, it was a very good deal because, you know, an Omega Seamaster, again, what, three, $4,000. Uh, uh, this is the watch, and in this sort of uh, beige or light cream color sort of... Uh, um, numbers or and uh, and hands this is uh, very similar to the watch that Daniel Craig wore in his final James Bond movie uh, No Time to Die this watch originally came with a different wristband on it it was you know a traditional looking wristband like you know the Rolex here but it had a, a divers extension on it which is an extra uh, extension, you know, how a regular watch opens like this. Well, it had an additional extension that opened up by about another inch on the other side of the latch. And because this is a low budget watch, that latch kept on coming undone. So I decided to replace it with this mesh band. But actually, getting this mesh band was a good thing because. Uh, Daniel Craig had his Seamaster with a mesh band like this. So it's actually more accurate to Mr. Bond uh, than, uh, than the original watch I bought was. So anyway, um, that is the collection that I have of knockoff watches. I have plenty of other watches, actually. I probably have about a dozen of them. Uh, and... Uh, like this one here, this is a micro brand by Stratton uh, that is kind of neat. Uh, but, um, but if you want me to talk about those, of course, I can talk about those in another video. Just let me know. But other than that, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this sort of, a, um, you know, a departure from the normal just as a change of pace. And if you did, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Have a great day.